Hi, I am Kimbo and I blog out of girlnagluggen.com and welcome to my YouTube channel. This video is part of my Silhouette Love series where I try to teach you to love your silhouette as much as I love my silhouette. I have broken down lots of little features, try to walk you through it step by step in all of the YouTube videos. Today I wanted to talk about cutting paper with your Silhouette Cameo and for the last two days I've been in my craft room cutting all the different kinds of papers that I could find trying to show you what it's capable of and all of the cool things that you can make. We're going to make some projects start to finish. I'm going to show you cut settings. I'm going to show you things to look for when you're picking out designs to cut out of paper and maybe things to avoid. First things first, I feel like we should talk about cardstock because there are so many different kinds and thickness and textures of cardstock. Um, the one that I use 90%, 95% of the time is this smooth cardstock. It's usually Paper Studio brand. They have packs of them at Hobby Lobby and usually the Paper Studio is about 40% off. So it makes them really cheap. You can buy packs of primary colors, pastel colors, shades of red, shades of gray. So whatever, whatever project you're using, I find like that is definitely cheaper than trying to you know, by individual pieces. So this one isn't, this is also from Hobby Lobby, but it's not the Paper Studio brand. This is just a red, a set of reds that I got for my last project. But I love the smooth. But in this video, we are going to be cutting out all these and see which one works best and if they don't work and what settings you're gonna to wanna to use for that. I also love using pattern. I think it just adds so much fun to add a little pop into it. So I love these subtle ones that aren't super patterned because when you're cutting stuff out, a lot can get lost. It's kind of the same concept as when you're using patterned vinyl. If you're cutting out something really teeny tiny, like if you're cutting out Hello, it's you're not gonna see any of the floral in it. You're just going to see that there's a little bit of a color variance. So that's why I like, I like patterns that aren't a little bit too busy. So I think this set, um, things like this work really well. Um, I also love double-sided. I can't find double-sided as often as I think I should. <laughs> they don't have very many packs at the craft stores of double-sided, but I love it because whatever you're cutting, it's gonna look so cute front to back. So I make a lot of paper flowers. That's what I like to make probably the majority of, but if you're making boxes or I'm making an exploding box, the double-sided just means both sides are just gonna look so cute. So I do love the double-sided. So this is just regular pattern paper that you can get from most craft stores. It's a little bit thinner than the colored cardstock that I like, but it cuts great. I do like make it so my pressure's not quite as high when I'm cutting these because this one's a little bit thinner. So we'll go over that, but it works great. I probably wouldn't go anything thinner than this. I do, you can cut it, it does cut, but when you're using just thin typing paper, it. I mean, I don't know what you're making that you would need thin typing paper for. Like most things that I'm making are the 3D crafts, the paper flowers, um, gift card holders, things like that. And so the typing paper usually just doesn't work. It can work. I just prefer a little bit thicker because it just looks a little bit nicer in my opinion. Um, I also have vellum that I'm going to cut because there is a vellum setting. So we will be cutting vellum. Um, glitter. So there is a glitter paper at Hobby Lobby. I actually bought this this pack. It's Paper Studio brand. Um, this is the one that is in, you know how you can go in there and there's, you can pick individual sheets. This is one that's in the individual sheets and then this is one that's in the pack. And they are very different. This one has a texture to it. This one also has a texture to it, but it's way smoother than this one. Can you even hear the difference? And then this one has a little bit of a thicker board. So we're gonna cut both and see which one cuts better. You de there is a glitter setting um, to cut through this thicker material, but this one I'm not so sure about just because it has, it has it's, it almost feels like light sandpaper, which I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but we do love glitter. It's pretty and shiny. Another thing we're gonna try it to cut out is, these have a foil on them. Do you see how they're shimmery? So they are 
about the same thickness as regular cardstock, but with that foil, I just wonder if the, how the blade's gonna work through them. So we're gonna be cutting out those. Um, this is my smooth cardstock, and then this is my textured cardstock. Let's see if we can. It has like a little bit of a grain into it. So I think it looks nice when you do the textured. I usually just prefer the smooth. I think the textured might be a little bit more than the smooth. So I, for some reason, I just always like the smooth. But textured cardstock can totally be cut. We're also going to be cutting this corrugated. I have never cut corrugated, so we're going to see if it works. And then, I don't know if you guys have been down the scrapbook paper aisle recently, but there are so many different varieties and iridescent, different textures. There's a lot. There's a lot to choose from. It's a little bit overwhelming. So I grabbed this one. It, lo it's, it looks like a basketball, um, and it feels kind of like a leather. It does not feel like paper. So we're gonna try that out and see how well that cuts as well. All right, let's just jump in. I am in my Silhouette Studio. I have the Business Edition, so it might look a little bit different than yours if you don't have the Business Edition. But everything that I'm gonna use, any settings that I'm gonna use, everybody should have an option to it no matter what Silhouette Studio version you are. I do love the Business Edition though. So if you're in the market to upgrade, do it. <laughs> okay, so first, just like with vinyl, everything that you have on here is something that should be what's being loaded into your silhouette. So with cardstock, you almost always have to use a mat. I know the Cameo 4 has a setting where you don't have to use a mat, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but um, I always use a mat. It just gives me a peace of mind. I never use a mat with my vinyl unless I'm doing vinyl scraps, but with cardstock, I always use a mat. So you want to make sure that your mat's selected. Up here in the right-hand corner is your page setup. Right here, it's going to put what machine you're using. I'm on my Cameo 3 because my Cameo 4 is cutting out another project in another room. Um, I make sure my cutting mat's selected. So if you have a longer one in, or that's where you would put none, but I have my Cameo in. And then this is where you're gonna put your media size. So if you have a 12 by 12 piece of scrapbook paper, select that. If you have a letter size, select that. I'm gonna go back because I am going to be using a 12 by 12. So everything that's on here is what you're going to be putting in your silhouette. I also like to put show cut border right down here. It's always selected, it's just part of my settings. The silhouette will not run off. It will stop around this no matter what, whether it's selected or not. So I just like to visually see it so I make sure that none of my project is going off. So it's getting, I wanna make sure everything's getting cut. And if it goes off, it won't get cut. So I like to leave that always. That's just a side note. I do that regardless of whatever I'm cutting out. Um, anyways, so when I'm cutting paper, you want to be really mindful about the things that you're selecting to cut because some things are going to be great with paper and some things are not going to be great with paper. So I have a couple examples. We have two designs here. We have this love and we have this beach time. So as intricate as this is, this love would be fantastic for paper because every single piece is connected. It's going to take a while to cut. I mean, it would if it was being cut with vinyl. It's very intricate, but it will come up really nice. The only thing that you would have to move back over is the O. So unlike vinyl, there is no way to easily move all of your paper design over. Like we can add transfer tape to our vinyl and move it to our project. But since cardstock isn't sticky on the back, we can move it with transfer tape, but we can't get it off the transfer tape, which means we have to move every piece like so if i'm putting this on a card i have to move all of this over and then i have to move the o over so it's really easy but if i do beach time i cut it out of cardstock i have to move this be it's connected so i'm going to move that i'd have to move the a over separately i have to move the ch over and then the time i would have to move over each piece that's not connected, I would have to try to line it up and make sure that it looks perfect. So when you're thinking about things that you're cutting out, the more that they're connected, like a cursive font is going to be better if it's a little bit smaller because you don't want to have to try to line everything up and make everything look nice. Um, and these are examples of things that I would definitely not cut out of paper. <laughs> This is really small and intricate and every single thing is separate, which means you would literally have to move over everything. 
Um, this adventure awaits. Look at all these little dots and swirls. Nothing's connected. I love this Merry Christmas one. I think it's adorable. But like I said, once again, every single thing is separate, which means you would have to pull off and move it and add it to your design separately. Same with, look at this. Look how cute these are. These are all in the Silhouette Design Store. But yeah, that looks like a nightmare. Definitely save that one for vinyl. But here are some examples of things that would be great. I mean, they're very intricate. Um, but see, this negative space, you'd cut out all these flowers, but you'd be left with this amazing overlay that would be so cute on a card, and then you add a word on it. Um, these feathers, every single thing is connected on these feathers. So that would be an easy cut. This Hello Summer, you would have to transfer over the middle of the O and the middle of the R. So if you have a font that you really like, you could definitely put a box or a circle around it and then do the negative space of it. That's a little bit easier than moving over each piece. Um, cactuses, every single thing is connected. You see these points where they're connected? I'll zoom in a little bit. Everything touches, which means it's going to stay in place and you're not going to have to try to line up. Even this B, which, I mean, look at how gorgeous that is, but everything's connected. So those are some great examples of things that will work fantastic with paper. Um, I personally love cutting 3D. I, I cut a lot of vinyl and the only thing time I really use paper is to make 3D projects. So they just... The design store has just so many amazing flowers and boxes. I'll show you a few here in a minute. Uh, but yeah, that's what I like to cut mostly is the 3D projects. But if you want to use your own font or one of the fonts that you have purchased, there's a couple things to stay away from. Do you see? I love this font. It's actually really such a fun font. But I mean, you, you don't want to cut this out of vinyl or cardstock. Anything that has a distress like this, it's going to take forever to cut around. All these little pieces might get stuck up in your blade. So I, I definitely avoid anything that has a lot of texture or grooves, rough edges like that. Um, and like I said, cursive, when it's connecting, just makes it really easy to transfer. But when you're doing a cursive font, you have to make sure to weld these together because these are all going to cut out separate. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're all selected right click and weld and it will make it so you're losing that piece so that's an important step if you are cutting out um, with a font that you've chosen make sure that you are welding all right let's go over here to the library and i just wanted to show you some really cute things look at these this is a cupcake box we've got exploding boxes witch's hat witch's fingers zombie fingers <laughs> i really like halloween halloween i feel like i should preface that um and skeleton fingers we've got 3d stars that you can make um tea light houses we can make a whole village i like i said i love making paper flowers let me look at all these flowers that i have they are so so gorgeous and they just take the work out of it you just click it and size it and cut i mean this one's do a doily flower you can make a little coffee cup crayon boxes crowns cupcake wrappers i just did this one this one's on my blog it's a little cake set you put frosting sprinkles and a cake box in there look campers cheeseburgers i mean come on there's so many amazing things in here bows so I love doing 3D options with the paper. I just, like I said, they're, I made a box and you just cut, you select it and cut it and fold it and you have this amazing box and it's just done for you. And it's, I don't know, I'm always amazed of how easy, like it seems like it would be hard and then when you put it together, you're like, oh, that's not hard at all. Okay, so we're gonna go and discuss this 3D pencil that um, so it's in the Silhouette store. So this 3D pencil, comes like this, which I love. Not all the designs come like this, but I love them when they're pre-colored. That way you know I'm cutting this out of pink and I'm cutting this out of yellow. I usually do that just to keep my mind straight so I know what I'm cutting. So this is going to be assembled. This is the lid. The eraser is the lid. This gets hot glued on here, and then we have the pencil lid on here. So when you're looking at this design, 
you want to make sure it's the same with vinyl. If you are sizing anything, you're sizing it all together. They are made to fit and nestle in perfectly together. So if you're sizing one thing, it's not going to match up. Um, especially when you're doing anything 3D, make sure that you're sizing it all together. Uh, another thing is these dashes are where the, the silhouette will score the paper. The solid line they will cut and then they will dash, 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 dash. It makes it so this is where it will fold so you can glue together. Um, I'll show you in, um, later on in the video what it sounds like. It just sounds like a clicking noise, but it's just so, I love this feature because it's so crisp and clean when you fold it. It just makes everything look so much professional, much more professional. So let's say we have our design. This is all connected. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to ungroup. And then I'm just going to cut out my yellow first. I want to make sure nothing's on your mat. So I never put it clear up here because I'm going to test cut. I'm going to test cut. If I'm using smooth cardstock, I will test cut at the beginning and then I won't test cut again unless I change out uh, my dip, my textures. So if you have a smooth cardstock and then you have a cardstock that's a little bit thicker, you're definitely going to want to test cut um, before each cut because I mean, just a little bit more thick makes it so it doesn't cut through all the way. So I move this over because the test cut is right up here in the corner. And then I'm going to make sure everything's selected. Like I said, I've got my mat and my media size. And then I'm going to click send up here in the right corner. This is where you're going to have this drop down menu. And there are a lot of paper options. They're in cardstock is what they're nestled under. So we have an adhesive back cardstock, which is specialty material that Silhouette sells. A lot of this, whatever setting they have, is probably specialty material that Silhouette sells. Um, like this metallic brushed sticker set, which is awesome. But um, chalkboard cardstock. So that's a specialty material that I don't... I. It's a little bit thicker, but I don't use it. We will be using this glitter cardstock when we cut out our glitter. This plain cardstock is what I cut out my smooth, um, nice, normal cardstock. That's your normal cardstock. It's not too thin. It's not too thick. That's going to be your plain. Um, they have printable adhesive backed cardstock, but we're not using that. This textured heavy cardstock is probably what I, if they didn't have a glitter cardstock, I'd probably be doing this textured heavy. I showed you that basketball pattern paper. That's probably what I will be clicking when I cut that out. It's just going to make it so it cuts out a little bit thicker than a normal cardstock. Um, you also have the corrugated paper down here. And I mean, they've got a lot of in here. Chipboard, that's the specialty chipboard, not the chipboard that you can buy at the store. So I'm going to go up to my cardstock plane. And it's going to tell me my blade should be at a 3, my force is at a 20, and my speed is at a 1. So I'm going to make sure that that's, those are the settings are correct. And then I'm going to test cut. And when you test cut, you want to make sure that it's popping out clean. Um, it's not grabbing anywhere. It's cutting that paper out fantastic. Because the paper will rip, and it just leaves these really not flattering edges on it. So you want to make sure that it's cutting clean. If it's not cutting through all the way, you can make your blade a little bit deeper. You can increase your force a little bit. It just depends. This is the hard part. Like no video is going to be able to help tell you the exact settings because it depends on how new your blade is and how heavy each paper is. And if it's cutting almost all the way through, but not all the way through, or if it's not cutting at all. So if it's not cutting at all, you're definitely going to want to um, go up maybe two if it's like barely scoring the paper. But if it's almost cutting all the way through, but it's just catching a few little places, you might want to increase your force. Um, speed. If you have a very intricate project or a very small project that you're trying to cut out, I always lower my speed. That's regardless if it's paper or if it's vinyl, lower that speed down pretty low. That makes the blade just go nice and slow and it gets all those cuts. Um, another thing is passes. You can make a double pass if you're cutting something out and you want to make sure that it's cut out. So the score, if it's going to do these marks, I don't like to do the double pass because it tends to do them a little bit thicker than I like. 
So if it's something like this, I will increase my blade or my force. If it is, I cut out um, a butterfly and it wasn't anything that had to be scored. It had none of these dashes. So instead, I just clicked a double pass. It makes it so the blade will go around twice. And I always, you always do that with the chipboard regardless because the chipboard's a little bit thicker. And I probably will be doing that with the glitter option as well because I just want to make sure that everything's cut out nice and clean before I take it off of my mat. Once you have your settings correct, you're gonna test cut, make sure it's cut correctly, and if it is, then you're just gonna send it and keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> All right, everything is ready with our settings. We're ready to send it over to our silhouette and get it cut, but there are a few things here that's just gonna make your cut even more perfect. Um, first, you want to make sure that your blade is somewhat new. It doesn't have to be brand new, but a nice sharp blade is going to just get us a nice crisp cut on our cardstock. Um, it tends to drag a little bit more just because it's a little bit thicker and it it just needs to be super sharp. I feel like with vinyl, you can kind of get away with having an older blade. It just cuts through really nice. It's not as thick. Um, but with cardstock, it's important to have a little bit of a nice sharp blade. If you don't have an option to have a nice sharp blade, I know blades have been kind of hard to find um, during quarantine. Make sure that you're taking your blade out and turning it and making sure that there's no paper or vinyl that's stuck inside of that blade. This is a ratchet blade. Let's see if we can get it to focus. It's a ratchet blade. Um, it's just what I prefer, but this will, same kind of concept if you're using an auto blade or ratchet blade. Both of them work great with paper. So I just move it all the way up to a 10 so my blade pops out the whole way. Make sure there's nothing in there that's gonna cause that blade from moving around. Now, while you want a brand new blade, you actually want an old mat. <laughs> I know that seems a little backwards, but the new mats are just so sticky that if you cut it all out and when you go to peel it off, it will tear your cardstock. Um, so if you have a new mat, all I do is I take off that blue protective sheet. I like press it against my shirt. I put a piece of a couple scrap pieces of cardstock on and take it off. I just try to take a little bit of that tack away. I do know that there are lots of different kinds of mats. There's low tack and really sticky ones, um, but I don't. I don't know. I just want to buy one type of mat. I don't want to have to try to think about it. So I have brand new mats for when I need them. And then I have these older mats that have a little bit of tack to them that are just perfect for cardstock. I did want to show you this hack though. If you um, have a mat, it's not super sticky. I do actually have a YouTube video coming on how to make your mat sticky again. But if you are ready to cut and your mat's not 100% sticky and your cardstock or your vinyl's moving around, you can add a couple strips of painter's tape and it just keeps it in place for you while you're cutting. So we're just gonna make sure that our rollers are adjusted to fit under a mat. You cannot cut out cardstock without a mat unless you're using the four. There is a feature on the four that kind of goes around and scores it, so it holds it, and then you can pop it out. But if you want a nice clean cut, put it on a mat, make sure that the rollers are set clear over here, it's the furthest one over, and load. And I like to use this line right here on the side as my guide. Once it's loaded, we're gonna do a test cut, which cuts right up here in the corner. I have a whole YouTube video on why you should do a test cut. It just makes sure that you're not cutting something all the way out and then ruining it because it wasn't cut. The cut settings weren't perfect. So I'm gonna do a little test cut, and then if it's good, then I'm gonna cut out the whole thing. All right, I did my test cut, and I wanted to show you. It actually ripped a little bit of the paper, and I couldn't get it to release from the side, which means I just need to adjust um, I'll probably adjust my force just a little bit deeper so it's going to cut it and make it a little bit nice. So that little dashes that you're hearing are where it's scoring it because this project is going to be folded. So it's going to go along, do these score marks, and then cut out there around the edge. Okay, so this is an important step. Before I unload, I actually look at it and make sure that it's cut. Because if it's not cut, I can send it around. 
so it's got a nice clean cut. If it is not cut, and I can't peel up a little bit of the corner if it's catching, then I will send it through again and just cut it out one more time um, just to make sure that I have that nice clean cut. When your cut settings are correct, just look how nice and easy they pop up. Perfect. All right, so here are my three projects cut out. We have a glue, we have a crayon, and we have a pencil. And I really like to use this Precision Glue by Elmer's. It just has a nice fine point, so I can put it kind of exactly where I want it. So like I said, they all had score marks, which means when you go to bend them, they bend and make it look so nice and clean. They just bend right on those score marks. And then I'll add glue right here and right here to make that pocket. Okay, so I realized that I have switched projects on you. We started with that cute 3D pencil box and then now we're making gift cards, but I filmed it, but I didn't forgot to film it with the camera that I use for YouTube. I filmed it for my Instagram stories. So it's still along the lines of schools and teachers. So I think I should get bonus points for that. But these designs are still in the Silhouette Studio library. They're still adorable. So hopefully you forgive me. So when you're weeding vinyl, you need um, a weeding tool. But when you're working with paper, it is really helpful to have a spatula. Um, I made a couple butterflies and when you pull up, it leaves all of the cardstock just stuck there. And the spatula just really helps it scrape it up and get it all off. All right, I wanted to show you this. This paper is a little bit thicker than the regular cardstock that I was using and I left my cut settings the same. So I wanted to show you, I can finesse it out, but it is ripping and leaving a little bit of cardstock left on there. So this is what happens if your cut settings aren't quite deep enough. You can kind of get it out, but you're risking ripping it and like I said you you're left with a little bit of I don't know it doesn't doesn't quite look as clean as it normally should okay so for this it's the basketball it's textured it's a little bit thick it feels a little bit more like vinyl like I don't feel like I could tear it as easily as I could paper I picked the cardstock heavy my blade's at about a five and my force is at a 33. I did do a test cut to make sure it was correct, but it's coming off pretty, pretty clean. A few little snags, but that's just kind of the norm. So that one definitely can be cut out. Regular, I you just use my regular ratchet blade. So this is the one that has a, looks like a little bit of foil on it. It has a sheen to it. I did cut it on cardstock plain, but I bumped my blade up one and my force is at a 27. So you can see I did my test cut. Nice and easy cut. This is the corrugated, and I can't even get past the test cut. It just will not be cutting through. This is double pass, blade at a 10. It's a no. So you'll definitely want to stick with Silhouette's corrugated. Not, I guarantee it's just not as bumpy. Like it still has this texture. It's just not quite as um, pronounced as this one is. Okay, this is the thicker of the glitters. I cut it on cardstock glitter, but I upped my blade to a seven and the force is 33 and I did do a double pass. 
you can tell as I'm pulling it off how you can see how thick and stiff it is but see my test cut This is the thinner of the glitter, and I lowered my blade to a six. It's on cardstock glitter still, force is still 33, so I, and it's still double pass. This is just regular, smooth cardstock, like your plain Jane, and I just picked the recommended settings. I didn't adjust anything, just plain cardstock is my setting. This one is the textured cardstock. It is a little bit thicker than the smooth cardstock. I'm trying to see if you can see the texture. So I actually let the cut settings the same, but I did a double cut on this one um, just so I can make sure that they pop out really nice. So same as the plain cardstock, just double cut. This is vellum, and I just used the vellum setting that they provided. Okay, I did want to mention, so I am on my Cameo 3. The Cameo 4 actually has a craft blade that cuts things a little bit thicker material. Um, but for this YouTube video, the paper settings are going to be the same for the Cameo 3 and the Cameo 4. I maybe you should try the corrugated paper with the Cameo 4 and the craft blade. But I just wanted to show you settings wise, adjusting the blade wise, it's going to be the same whether you're using a Cameo 1 or a Cameo 4. All right, I just wanted to show you all the cute things that we've made. Um, I love making these 3D flowers. This is just regular cardstock that you buy for like your printer from Walmart put it on a watercolor paper. It looks so cool. Look at these butterflies. If you had to cut these out by hand, I wouldn't. <laughs> I definitely would not want to, but look how cute those are. You could hang those up and make like a whole bunch of different sizes and put them up in your little girl's room. I'm loving the glitter. I'm so glad that the glitter cut out so good because now I just want to cut out all the glittery things. Look at how cool this is. This is just one of the designs in the Silhouette store. It's a little shell purse. They have a mermaid that comes with it that I didn't put on, but this is the shiny paper. It's got like a foil to it. And then I put this glitter behind it and I'm kind of obsessed with how cute it is. Little treat box. I also love these. Perfect little teacher gift card. You just slip the gift card right in the back. And I also whipped out this. It's just a pencil box. Easy peasy. Anyway, I am always just surprised about how cool and easy these projects are. Like they look difficult like this. It kind of looks difficult, right? To make a 3D project. It cuts, it bends, you just add a little glue and it's done. It's just so easy. All right, I wanted to show you this cute exploding box that I made. Um, for my niece, all out of paper, you lift the top up and it falls down. We've got pictures, everything was cut. I did all of these cute things with the print and cut feature. I've added pictures and quotes. You could do stickers, there's just so many fun things. Anyways, love my silhouette cameo. I keep finding new ways to love it. So if you guys have any questions, leave them down below. Um, and then if you guys have any ideas of other things that you want me to do my, for a Silhouette Love series, let me know. And if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.